What did Google, PayPal, eBay, WhatsApp, Tesla, SpaceX, and Uber have in common? They're all American companies founded by immigrants. In fact, more than one-fourth of all U.S. businesses and 40% of Fortune 500 companies are now started by immigrants. Immigration is such a divisive issue, but it shouldn't be. This country was founded by immigrants. Over and over and over again, our history is a continuous wave of foreigners coming to America for the prospect of a better life. And that immigrant spirit defines the American spirit. Our unwavering commitment to welcome diversity is what sets us apart from the rest of the world. Most countries primarily define themselves by ethnicity, race, religion, or a common culture. But the United States of America was intentionally designed to be more inclusive, dynamic, and adaptable, founded on ideals and values like freedom and personal liberty. Our country's motto, prominently displayed on the seal of the United States, is e pluribus unum out of many, one. And this approach has proven, over the test of time, to be an asset. That's why the current narrative of fear is so alarming. The United States and the world, it seems, is increasingly polarized around the issue of migration. Instead of engaging in an informed debate about the role and efficacy of government and financial systems, and even our immigration laws, people are quick to blame migrants and refugees for draining resources and taking jobs, an assumption that finds no basis in fact. We cannot let fear distort reality. That doesn't serve our best interests. The fact that 25% of US companies are now started by immigrants is especially significant when you consider that immigrants only comprise about 13% of the US population. Immigrants create more jobs than they take. They're value added not just to our economy, but to our culture. People don't come here to be lazy. They come here for freedom and opportunity, to work hard and achieve the American dream so that their kids can achieve even more. And this is not a new phenomenon. We just forget. Because by design, previous waves of foreigners are woven into the very fabric of our society. Did you know that one million Irish immigrants came to the United States in 1846 during the Irish potato famine. One of those migrants was the father of Henry Ford, who founded Ford Motor Company, a very American company. <laughs> and Henry's mother, incidentally, was the child of Belgian immigrants. But those Irish immigrants, most of them were Catholic. And it's no coincidence that prejudice against Catholics and other immigrants reached a peak in the 1850s with the rise of the American political party and the Know Nothing movement to purify American politics. A hundred years later, John F. Kennedy was elected as this country's first Catholic president. In my personal experience, for the past 18 years working as an immigration attorney, I've had the privilege to work directly with immigrants to the US. My clients come from all different countries and cultures, they speak different languages, practice different religions. They have varying levels of income and education. The one common, consistent characteristic across the full range of these unique individuals is the desire to be better, to work hard, to seize opportunity, to make the best out of every situation, no matter how challenging. My clients inspire me every day. There are exceptions to every rule, but generally, Immigrants embody the very ideals we value as American. And my experience illustrates something else that's important, the value of civic discourse, face-to-face -face conversation. When you sit with someone talking about your hopes and dreams, your fears and challenges, the details of daily life, those superficial labels that divide us start to fall away. Fear transforms into understanding, empathy, and compassion. If you don't believe me, try it. Before you hate on migrants and refugees, before you attach these group stereotypes onto individuals that you never met, before you blame those people for taking jobs and using public benefits that we pay for, try talking to those people. They probably work hard and pay income tax. 
they certainly pay property and sales tax. If they don't speak English, they're probably trying to learn. And I'll bet their kids speak English as well as my dad, the first generation American child of a Russian refugee, my grandfather, who grew up in a predominantly immigrant neighborhood in Brooklyn, New York, speaking Yiddish. We know this story. We have lived this story over and over again. This is the epic story of America. The greatest challenge to our culture, the greatest threat to our culture, does not come from the outside. It never has. We should not only welcome immigrants, we should aspire to be like immigrants, to embody in ourselves the immigrant spirit. That would be truly American. <laughs> Thank you.